Choose a target. You look at the plant. Lock on it. You stare down a bit, focusing on the green of its leaves and the curve of its stem. It is alive, flowing through this plant as life. Flowing through you is life. Power. You are power. You are life. Release. The plant f- falls in ashes to the ground, shivering leaves and stem falling like dust. Dr. Ai Ai watches you, leaning forward in anticipation. Your heart pounds, your body fully of energy. It flows through your veins, making your skin warm and your body shiver. You hold your hands up, not wanting to touch anything and risk draining it too. Dr. Ai Ai smiles trumpetly. You did it. How do you feel? You look up at your therapist, unable to hold back a grin. Amazing, you answered. It's like I've drank three cups of coffee. She gives you a thumbs up. (laughs) A whole step forward. Good job. The only thing is, you say, I feel like if I touch anything else, my quirk will activate. Dr. Aya's eyes sparkle. Ah, so maybe controlling your quirk isn't the problem, she concludes. Maybe it's de- deactivating it. You nod. That sounds about right. Your quirk is usually just shuts itself off. What normally happens when you try to turn it off? Um, well... You say, keeping your hands away from anything in the room. After using it, I normally just pass out and it goes away on its own. So, it's a lack of practice, that's all. Dr. Ai assures you, I'm sure you'll be fine. Just focus. The same part of you that you enhanced and just say goodbye. Just like stepping back from a hug. You do what you're instructed, imagining your embrace and taking a step back. But what will happen if it doesn't work? What will happen if you can't deactivate it? Your breathing shallows and you stare at your hands. The hands that could kill. That have killed. Power flows through you, the plant's life force, filling your veins and dra- demanding oh my God, demanding more. What happens if you can't deactivate it? Suddenly, a voice erupts your thoughts, calm and soothing. Breathe. Trust yourself. Ai takes your hand and you panic. You try to pull away, but her grip is strong and determined. She's going to die. You're going to drain her. Killing her like you did that village so long ago. I'm fine, Dr. Ai Ai says, rubbing your palms. Breathe. Just breathe. Your hands don't feel warm and numb like before. It stopped. Uh, huh? Uh, uh, how? You whisper, looking at Ai Ai. Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> she takes your hands from yours, smiling. Once you felt me take your hands you stopped it on your own it's a reflex to protect me you stare at her hands you didn't even realize see dr ai Ai hums all you have to do is trust yourself now she says clasping her hands together good job today i think you really did well she says bowing up thank you Uh, it's my job your highness and then it stopped, just like that. You giggled, proud of yourself. Shoto smiles at you, brushing your hair out of your face. He brings his mouth to yours, his hand cupped against your cheek. He pulls away, smirking. I'm proud of you. You roll your eyes. Shinuakana, your new guard, pops his head around the corner, bowing. Your highnesses. You blush, hoping he didn't see the little kissing scene. Shoto glances at you, grinning. Yes? You ask, standing up to your spot on the couch. I think I said his name right, but I'm going to probably butcher it every single time. Shinuakana is tall, taller than Takashi was, even. His voice is deep. Although you don't hear it much, he doesn't talk really. Only when it's required. Since the wedding is in three days, he says, it's time for you to try on your dress. You tilt your head. I've already picked a dress. Since the wedding was supposed to happen earlier, the preparations were all ready, including your dress and Shoto's outfit as well. I'm not sure why, Shinuoka says, but the designer and his maids have summoned you. You shrug. Take me to them, then. 
The sewing room is bustling with maids, all coming in and out, carrying fabrics and supplies. When you enter, though, all of the commotion stops. Your dress designer, a man no younger than you, runs up to you with tears in his eyes. Oh, it's awful. It's absolutely mangled. Redendrous, he cries, hugging you. You laugh. He is one of your favorite people at the palace, strange and loud and sparkly. You pat him on the back in an attempt to comfort him. Ayama, what's wrong? I'm sure it's nothing to cry over. Ayama backed away from you, turning to Shinoka. Thank you for bringing her. This absolutely disgraces. He then hugs the stoic guard, and Shinoka freezes, like he's never been hugged in his life before. You swear you can see a hint of blush on his cheeks. When he's released, he straightens his uniform, furrowing his eyebrows. You can only giggle. Ayama runs back to, oh, runs back of the room, then brings you the dress. Still disheartened. Oh dear, look at that. It's in pieces, he cries, seemingly more upset than you are. It's all my fault. I used my quirk on it and to, ma to make it sparkle, you see? See how the light reflected? I just was thinking. Your dress, or what's left of it, is shredded. Str uh, sequences and glitter falling from the white fabric. To be honest, you did think it was a little much, so this might be a good thing. Well then, you say, putting your hands on your hips. Let's just redo it then. Ayama's eyes line up. Oh, wonderful idea, your highness. <laughs> this time, you grin. I plan on helping. Mm-hmm. <laughs>